I don't blame you if you don't remember because last week was a bleep show uh, with Amber Heard and her team and we read pages and 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 pages of their appeal stuff. They submitted their appeal stuff. It was submitted by Ben Roddenborn. That video's out, by the way. And then also, um, Amber Heard and her team, they had like an amicus curiae, so I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's the best I can do. Their original one was like 70 something pages and we read that. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I want to make your guys' ear hole bleed. What happened to the blurry? <laughs> What? Ah, why is it blurry? Maybe I'm just getting, maybe I'm just getting really paranoid. Uh, the DUI guy, the DUI guy said Ben Chu did this like a boss. I'm sure he did. I'm always very, I'm always very appreciative of things that Team Johnny Depp files because I feel like it's straight to the point. There's no BS. It's not like, I don't know, man. Some of the stuff that like Amber Heard and her team filed, it's just like, just trim the fat out, okay? Trim the fat out. Let's just get to the fucking point. Let's get to the meat of the argument. Stop obfuscating so much and let's just do it. But we're, we're very glad that we're reading a Team Johnny Depp file paperwork thing right now, okay? So it's going to be okay. We're, we're, I don't think our heads are going to be too jumbled up, although I'm totally making it jumbled up right now with my rambling. Anyways, hello. <laughs> two times speed. Good luck doing two times speed, okay? Because I just had an honest tea and it has a little bit of black oolong in it. I think my minds are like... Pew! It's a little bit crazy right now. All right. So um, in the Court of Appeals, as you guys know, it's taking place in Virginia where the trial um, happened. Uh, we have Amber Laura Heard, John C. Depp, Appellee's Omnibus, opposition to Amica's motions for leave to file briefs amicus curiae. Um, huge shout out, by the way, for Brandon for sending me this doc. And I think Brandon said they got it from Popcorn Planet. So shout out to both of them. Thank you. And that's why we're reading it right now. Uh, appellee John C. Depp II, Mr. Depp, by and through his undersigned counsel, respectfully submits his omnibus opposition to the motion for leave to file brief of Emma Guy Curie Sanctuary for Families. The Virginia National Organization for the Women, uh, the D.C. Coalition Against DV, Equality Now, Esperanza United, the Feminist Majority Foundation, Battered Women's Justice Project, the Women's Equal Justice Project, National Crime Victim Law Institution, the Coalition Against Trafficking Women, and Professor Catherine A. McKinnon at L. Is that how you pronounce that? At L. <laughs> In support of the defendant, appellant filed for the Amakai by Simpson Thatcher and Bartlett LLP, the Simpson Motion, and the Simpson Amakai. And the motion for leave to file Amicus Brief filed by the Amakai by Fletcher, Heald, and Hildreth. Oh, I think, um, oh man. I think these were the new law firms that Amber Heard is also working with. I don't know. I really, I'm very curious to see how many law firms she's working with. Because so far that we know, she dropped in Lane's law firm. We have Roddenborn's uh, law firm. Is, well, it's not his law firm. It's the law firm that he works with. Uh, Wood Rogers. So that's one. And then we have uh, Ballot Spar, which is the new appeal lawyers. That's two. And then it seems like there's more lawyers that are working on other stuff as well. Like that's that's a lot of lawyers. It'd be really hard for them to kind of like connect with each other you know like imagine imagine one workplace and different departments how it's already hard to have like interdepartment communications but like between like different companies like different law firms stuff like that i don't know it's, it might be a shit show unless unless there's someone on her team that's really good at organizing all this i don't know uh introduction actually you know this is a term that i've never heard before this is a kitchen sink appeal i do want to look that up because i've never heard of that before a kitchen sink appeal. I don't know. It's uh, how to avoid the kitchen sink appeal. <laughs> Wait, this is actually hilarious. The lexology.com. Um, how to avoid the kitchen sink appeal and other nuances for a self-insured health plan. All right. Let's see what the kitchen sink appeal. Oh, man, this is really long and lengthy, but it seems like they're just like copy paste arguments. Is that what it's going? That's what it's saying. A kitchen sink appeal. I'm a cop. Wait, can I? Uh, no, I'm too lazy. A kitchen sink appeal is often a cut and paste compilation of 25 pages or more, usually containing long passages and references to cases which appear to have no bearing whatsoever on appeal. Oh my goodness, that is straight to the point. <laughs> Ooh, we started with some fire here. Who drafted this? Was it Ben Chu who drafted this? Hi, Cecilia. How are you doing today? All the I don't know. I don't know where the money be coming from. We wondering the same thing. When you find out, let us know. Hey, Storm. How are you doing today? How is it going? Uh, this is a kitchen sink appeal with appellant purporting to assert no fewer than 16 assignments of error. Appellant 
Laura Amber Amber Laura Heard, Ms. Heard, is represented by two large and well-regarded law firms is seeking to relitigate virtually every major ruling made by two distinguished and highly respected chief judge judges of the Fairfax County Circuit Court, the Honorable Bruce D. White, retired. So initially, the trial was being... Um, so initially, the trial was being... Or not the trial, because it didn't really happen yet. Initially, everything was being overseen by Bruce D. White. That's why if you look at the court docs, you're going to see Bruce White, Bruce White. You're not going to see Judge Penny until later on. So I guess what happened was that Bruce White, he retired, and then Judge Penny took over the case. Um, over the course of a three-year litigation and a six-week jury trial, in addition to the oversized brief... <laughs> Oversized indeed of 55, 55 pages that Ms. Heard has filed in support for appeal. The Amicai seek to represent, to present a collective 93. Oh, I did not read the 90 pages one. We only read the 60 pages one. Damn, I didn't know those are 93 pages one. Of additional argument in support of Ms. Heard's positions. If the motions were granted, Mr. Depp would be required to respond to a total of 148 pages with his own brief which presently is set at 55 pages. Though there are doubtless cases in which the briefings by Emma Guy Curie might assist the court in resolving the issues before it, this is not one of them. Mr. Depp respectfully submits the filing of such extensive additional briefing by Emma Guy Curie here, Curie here is neither necessary nor appropriate and should not should not be allowed. As a threshold matter, the court should deny their motions because the MCI failed to comply with the applicable rules by inter alia, neglecting to properly assign error, which violation constitutes sufficient grounds for denial. Moreover, Ms. Hurd is very competently represented, is not in need of assistance or additional briefings in support of her position, nor should Mr. Depp be burdened with having to respond to such voluminous additional briefing damn um, remember the, the the original one was 93 darn pages hi to how are you doing today oh hello palermo no 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 no. first of all i was streaming yesterday on twitch okay i was playing overwatch for like five hours i don't know where you were but i was there okay i don't know where you were but hi palermo how are you doing today Finally, the Amakai's arguments add nothing to the legal analysis provided by Appellant's Hertz counsel and appear focused. Instead of arguing with the jury's clear findings in favor of Mr. Depp or the underlying factual issues, the Amakai proceeds from the essential premise that Ms. Hurd is a representative of DAV, mm, a premise that is emphatically and soundly rejected by the jury who paid careful attention to the evidence presented during the six-week trial. Both Amakai's briefs cherry-pick evidence. Didn't we, we talked about that a lot, right? Cherry-picking their cherry picking a lot they're minimalizing a lot of things that they believe should have been swayed should have swayed the jury to a different finding but offer the court no insight on the legal issues actually at issue in miss Hurd's appeal allowing this additional briefing would merely serve to complicate what is already a sprawling misplaced appeal accordingly mr Depp most respectfully requests that the court deny the fletcher and simpson motions uh, number two, it bears noting that a trial court rejected a motion to file amicus brief at the pleading stage of this case for many of the same reasons the motion should be denied here. Wait with then Chief Judge White noting on the record that Ms. Hurst's counsel in the case are highly experienced and will present the law quite adequately into the court. Oh my goodness. I wonder how much, how much did she have to pay to the lawyers who worked on that 90-page freaking <laughs> essay? <laughs> oh my goodness. I wonder how much she would have to pay because imagine just getting it rejected. It's like, ooh, yikes. Uh, there just goes money down the drain, I guess. Um, let's take a look into the argument. I know, isn't it so cute, eh, Mackie? Is he so cute? He's so adorable. I love it. My friend's got it for me for my birthday. Yay. I never got to say happy birthday to you. Oh, I thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. The M Oh, happy birthday to your brother too, by the way. I know our birthdays are really close. Uh, the Emma guy failed. Oh, no, sorry. Start over. Number one. The court should deny leave because the amicus failed to comply with the applicable rules. To wit, a brief, brief amicus curiae must comply with the rules applicable to the brief of the party supported. I don't know what the hell I just read just now, but okay. Because the amicus are supporting, are seeking to support Ms. Hurd's opening brief on her appeal, they are required to comply with all of the requirements set forth in Rule 5A20, including the requirement under Rule 5A20C that the brief must contain a separate heading for assignments of error with a list of specific errors claimed to have been made by the trial court and an exact reference to the page 
of the record where the error has been preserved. A failure to assign error or insufficiencies in the assignments of error are both a basis to dismiss an appeal or as is the failure to adequately support an assignment of error with citations to the relevant pages of the rule. Yikes. Did they, did they not do their formatting correctly? That's not good. Here, neither the brief offered by the Simpson Amakai. Sorry, water break. Mm. Oh, my God. Guys, get a Yeti, please. Get a Yeti. Or, sorry, you don't have to get a Yeti. <laughs> get a Lexus. Get a Yeti. No, get a Yeti and fill it up with some nice warm water. It is a game changer, okay? If it's cold over there, you ain't got the heat on. Or if you're out and about and it's cold, get some, get a Yeti and just put some warm water in there. It's, oh, it's so, it's so, it's so nice. It's so comforting. Neither, here neither the brief offered by Simpson Amakai nor the brief offered by the Fletcher Amakai complies with the express requirements. The Fletcher Amakai brief does not contain a section of assignments of error at all. Yikes, Fletcher. While the Simpson Amakai included a separate section for assignments of error, but failed to support it with any citations of the record. Guys, imagine being in school right now, or I don't know if you guys are already in school, but for those of you guys who are in school, imagine being in school right now, submitting your thesis report or something like that, right? And then your teacher hands it back to you and is like, um, excuse me. Where are your citations? There, there's no citations. What am I supposed to do with this? How do I know what you're saying is BS or not? <laughs> Susan Emika included a separate section of assignments of errors but failed to support any citation of the record. In addition to the failure to provide any supporting citation, oh, something's in my eye. Oh my God. Oh, something's in my eye. Hold on. Oh, I heard about that. I heard the font size was off. Did they make the font smaller or something like that so it would fit in the pages better? Was it something like that? You know, okay. First of all, let me uh, let me switch to this view really quick. Anyone, do you guys remember when you're writing your essays and your teacher's like, oh, it has to be in Times New Roman, size 12 font, the margins have to be blah, 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 the heading has to be blah, 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 blah. Dude, anyone here mess with the font size before or mess with the, <laughs> the margins or the heading? Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes when you're bad at writing, but you're just trying to fill up the page as much as you can, you might do it. I, I remember there's one person um, that would do like double space, um, double space between the sentences just so they can like, you know, just so it could make it look like they wrote more than they really did. Oh, man. Is that what her other team did? Except they wanted to fit more words on the doc. That's why they fuck with the font. <laughs> Um, Arif says, I wish Amber disappeared for good. She reminds me of the scene from Scary Movie and the ghost face cuts off Buffy Gilmore's head and she still won't shut up about how she has the upper hand looked <laughs> Oh my God. I forgot about that movie. Great scene. Great scene. Hi, Schubert. How are you doing today? Yeah, they did make it so smaller to fit more words and the courts don't appreciate moves like that. Oh my God. Hi, Leela. How are you doing? Oh my God, Leela, is that your cat? She's adorable. You can also modify the font kerning so the letters are slightly more squished together. There's a lot of little tricks. Hi, Keldon. How are you doing today? Yeah. They made the font smaller to fit more BS. Yo, that is funny. We, should we look up these law firms? Oh my goodness. What other cases did they, did they work on? Where is she finding these, <laughs> these lawyers? Now, first with the lane, you know, now this. Mm, they, are, they are involved in some funny business. All right, so in addition to the failure to provide any supporting citations, the Simpson Amakai also, oh, I'm sorry, let's go. Blip, 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 blip. Oh, this is what we're talking about. The Simpson Amakai also violated the rules by using a size 12 font rather than the required size 14, meaning their brief is actually even longer than appears to be on its face. Is that why we felt like we were taking forever to read it? <laughs> Hi, oh my gosh, Comer, thank you so much. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Comer just gifted five memberships. Thank you so much. I did they just recently added that on YouTube? That's so awesome. For those of you guys who are new here, if you got a membership, you have a baby corgi badge now, and you got an emotes, you know, there's some emotes in there. So dude, thank you so much, Comer. I really appreciate that. Hello, 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 hello. Number two, the court should deny leave to file the briefs because the appellant is well represented. Mm, is she? <laughs> I don't know. We're starting to be a little, <laughs> I don't know. We're scratching our heads a little bit, aren't we? And responding to the amicai would be unnecessarily burdened, Mr. Depp. 
Subject to expectations not pertinent here, a brief amicus curiae is permitted only on motion and by consent of this court. The rules therefore reflect that such briefing is generally considered unnecessary, nor would be necessary or helpful in this case. It is undisputed that Ms. Hurd is well represented in this action by two major law firms. Oh, okay. So yeah, these are the two law firms we're talking about. But... Um, I guess, like, for her other shit, she has, like, other law firms working on, like, all the other subsidiary stuff, which is, like, the amicus curiae, I guess, right? Toots! Yay! You got a membership from Comer. So if anyone here got a membership, y'all got it from Comer. Make sure to give Comer a huge, huge, huge thank you. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, no one. How are you doing today? How's your day going? What is up? It is undisputed that Ms. Hurd is well represented in this action by two major law firms, Ballot Spar and Wood Rogers, Wood Rogers, who also acted as Ms. Hurd's co-lead trial counsel. On behalf of Ms. Hurd, Woods Roger and Ballot Spar have already filed an oversized brief of 55 pages that seeks to put at issue 16 separate assignments of error. She certainly does not need 93 pages of additional supporting brief from outside Amakai. As noted above, in light of Simpson Amakai's use of smaller font size, the actual pages of extra briefing are closer to 100 to adequately present her arguments to the court. Oh man, someone copy and pasted that document and they were like, okay, if we were to change the page, this font to size 14, let's see how long it really would be. Moreover, Ms. Hurd's counsel appeared to be acting in coordination with counsel for the Amakai, which strongly indicates an attempt by Pell and her to circumvent the page limits imposed on both parties. <laughs> for example, in the proposed amicus brief offered by Simpson Amakai, which was filed and served, I mean, I, do you think they're also on her payroll as well? I would assume so. Which was filed and served the same day as Ms. Hurd's opening brief, Ms. Hurd's entire statement of facts is simply incorporated by reference in an open acknowledgement that the Amakai had previously received Ms. Hurd's brief and were acting in coordination with her counsel. Ooh, which counsel? Mr. Depp, who has received leave to file a brief of only 55 pages, would be unnecessarily, unfairly burdened if the Amakai briefs were allowed. So this is Johnny Depp and his team that are, they are hoping, they are hoping it gets rejected because this is more work for them. This is probably more unnecessary work. They can be focusing on the big things, but if they had to respond to the 90 plus pages of the Amakai brief, like that is just way too time consuming. <laughs> They're just like, please, no, I don't want to respond to this. Mr. Depp must already respond to Ms. Hurd's highly unusual. <laughs> Hold on a second, I need a break. Oh my gosh, okay. Did Ben, ben Chu wrote this, right? Oh, this is hilarious. Mr. Depp must also address the three additional assignments of error. Uh, oh, sorry. Mr. Depp must already respond to Ms. Hurd, Hurd's highly unusual... <laughs> The little jabs that we're throwing here. I love it. Uh, 16 separate assignments of error in a single brief. Further, Mr. Depp must also address the three additional assignments of error he identified for the court's consideration in the event of remand. If the Amakai briefs were allowed, Mr. Depp would also be forced to address their 93 pages of argument, totaling 148, all in the same re responsive brief. The burden of Mr. Depp doing so would be substantial and unjustified. Three. The court should deny leave because the arguments for the Amakai are irrelevant and inappropriate. Ooh, let's get into the, uh, what's inappropriate about it? Let's, let's, I mean, we already have an inkling. Hurt is willing to run into the ground and go bankrupt for it. She's a dog with a bone. She won't let it go. I can see her saying, don't forget to put X in, add Y. So eager to be the loudest. Uh, he signed at the bottom, so I believe so. Mr. Depp will not address the substance of the Amakai's arguments in detail. In this opposition, other than to point out that the arguments in the briefs are for the most irrelevant to the legal issues on appeal and consist largely of disagreements with the jury's factual findings or complaints about the impact of the jury's factual findings on society in general. The Amakai cherry pick and misstates evidence. Yes, we talked about this. When we went through it, we're, man, we were just, mm-mm. The, some of the stuff that they brought up made Johnny Depp look so bad, but it was like out of context. 
alone, just if it was just if it stood alone, it would be like, oh my god, like Johnny Depp's a horrible person. But once you find out the context of everything that happened, how it happened, and like just things like that, it was just like, oh my god, like they are absolutely, absolutely just misstating things just to make themselves look better. But again, like you know, if the people didn't watch the trial, they weren't paying attention, then they might be like, oh okay, we're like Team Amber Heard. But I don't know, man. Like, I'm so glad that we're getting here. Yay! Yeah. Okay, let's go, Benju. The Amicai cherry picks and misstates evidence that they maintain supports their personal factual conclusions to argue that the jury got the factual issues wrong while ignoring the substantial evidence, including testimony of credible, credible disinterested witnesses that was present to the trier of facts of Ms. Hurd's AB conduct, admission, and conspicuous lack of credibility. The Amicai also expend many pages arguing the jury's verdict is somehow harmful to AB victims in general. Yeah, there was a lot of things that they were just reaching really, really hard. Such arguments are wholly inappropriate on appeal. This court should not substitute its own judgment, much less the judgment of Amicai Curie, for that of the jury. Uh, C. Kelly v. Commonwealth, we do not substitute our judgment for that of the trier of facts. Likewise, the amicus focus on some perceived social harm that will result to AB victims generally from the verdict is both factually misguided because the jury clearly and emphatically conclude that Mr. Depp is not an AB and an inappropriate argument because the jury was tasked with making a factual determination with respect to only the parties to this action, not with sending a message to society at large. Hutchins v. Commonwealth, closing argument, asking jury to send a message to society in general was improper because of its tendency to inflame a juror's prejudices and to divert the juror's attention from the evidence produced at trial and focus it upon extraneous and admissible matters. Remember, I don't know if you guys remember this, but in Roddenborn's closing argument, he he made a statement that was similar to this. Um, I think he said that, like, if you agree, if, if you side with Mr. Depp, you are sending a message to all the ab victims out there it was something similar to that i don't know if you guys remember what the exact quote was or if someone has a video of it but i remember him talking about that and i think ben chu and um yeah team johnny depp said that an argument like that is very inappropriate because you're putting a lot of weight uh towards basically what this paragraph says okay this paragraph says it way better than i do but you're basically just giving the jury you're you're basically misguiding the jury into thinking that oh you know if we side with johnny depp that means it's just gonna send a bad message to everyone everywhere which is like not true right in this context it would be unfair to force mr depp to use some of his limited pages in responding to the extraneous arguments god i love this just short sweet just ah uh, straight to the point love it uh moreover a back and forth between mr depp and the amica on these non-issues would be a distraction and nothing useful to the court in assessing the actual legal issues before it on appeal Oh, man. Beautiful. Ben Chu. Oh. Ben Chu, Andrew Crawford. Beautiful. Beautiful. Based on the A4 said, the court should deny Amica's motions for leave. Oh, man. Okay, so we got to wait until we hear more about this. Um, oh, man. Yeah, 12 pages. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Very nice. Very, very nice. And they send it over to Mr. Roddenborn, Mr. J. Ward Brown. David Axelrod and oh my god this is more counsel for appellant for Amber Laura Heard counsel for Simpson Amakai like I said I wonder if these people are also on her payroll as well the people that prepared the Amakai um wow 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 okay or maybe it was the organizations that paid for it although I don't know would they, would they be like pulling money together to do that <laughs> I have no idea she wants to keep Johnny, of course. So she's reaching for anything and everything. It's not like if she wins, she'll start getting movies. Context, Amber's number one foe. So true. Hi, Norman. How are you doing today? 